So today, um, I will be talking about um, not so much on like uh, I think I think the, the the topics that I put down on the schedule was um, like less uh, attractive. Uh, but today, I'm really gonna really uh, want to change the topic of my uh, presentation to present you the unique network analytics opportunities on Filecoin, and I think that's a more forward-looking um, uh, topic, so that might be more interesting. Yeah, so just a, a quick uh, intro about uh, Starboard, what we do. Uh, so uh, our slogan is empowering uh, Web3 data economies uh, with network analytics and product incubation. Basically, we do two things. We do um, network analytics. Uh, we do product incubation to help um, first to drive uh, understanding of the network and also to drive participation of the network. Uh, we are a very, really dedicated uh, participant uh, and contributor to the Falcon ecosystem because uh, we think that uh, this ecosystem is um, highly valuable and has a great future. Great, uh, and the agenda of my talk today, um, just three parts. Uh, first, what is changing uh, in Web3 economies um, over the past few years? Uh, second is, uh, what additional data does Filecoin provide? And the last part, I'll talk about the unique uh, network analytics opportunities on Filecoin. Yeah, so first, uh, let's think of the questions. What has changed over the past few years for Web3 economies, right? Uh, first of all, uh, we can see that over the past few years, um, there's an exponential growth in the adoption of uh, Web3 services. Um, computation, right, in, in the form of smart contract, um, so things like Ethereum powering a smart contract, NFT adoption. You have storage, like you have Filecoin, right? You have other services like Arweave, ICP, et cetera. You have IoT, uh, you have content delivery, et cetera, et cetera. So really, um, what we are seeing right now is that a few observations of the Web3 economies, right? Uh, one, um, we, we are gradually seeing utility that's emerging for Web3. So a, a big criticism is that for, for uh, Bitcoin or for uh, early days crypto economics uh, is that, oh, it's just a token economy, right? There's no utility in it. What do people get out of it, right? So, but we have seen that uh, changing over the past few week, uh, for a few years uh, because of like useful work, right? You have, uh, because uh, we have, we're seeing the emergence of a Web3 uh, native commodity that everyone needs, which is uh, data and cloud services. And also, uh, we are actually probably going to uh, witness the transition uh, from just a token eco economy to like mass, pro pro uh, mass adoption um, of uh, decentralized cloud services to the web in general, right? But it's not just limited to uh, Web3. And the second thing that we have observed um, that has changed uh, over the past few years is that people started to consume services that are provided by uh, Web3 economies and or uh, uh, by economies that are powered by blockchain. Right? Um, with that being said, like we've seen the, uh, we are also observing the emergence of service marketplaces and service uh, uh, and market economies uh, on top of blockchains. Uh, when you have a market, when you have service, when you have utilities, the next thing is the, that uh, there will be clients, right? There will be supply and demand. And clients will need to choose uh, their service providers as well, right? So, so uh, it's very different from like Bitcoin, where uh, people just like uh, compute on the one simple thing. Right now, you are um, facing a big um, market economy, and people need to make decision. And the third part is about reputation. You have services, you have lots of service providers, and people deliver different kinds of service quality, right? So that starts to uh, vary uh, differentiation among service pr providing is emerging, uh, and therefore the notion of reputation and the sense of service quality uh, starts to emerge as well, right? And that is very important um, and for for an always improving uh, Web three economy. And that is also, uh, to my uh, point, that the 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 potential for a Web three uh, economy to compete with uh, like the traditional centralized um, data services. Maybe let me just use Filecoin as an example. So a quick overview. Uh, I think uh, Filecoin is a really great example of a utility-driven token economy. Uh, it provides uh, decentralized data storage, uh, retrieval, computation capabilities in a very useful uh, and also efficient way, uh, and therefore unblocks lots of uh, new business opportunities 
uh, that carries real utilities. And since its launch, um, Falcon is really leading the way for the uh, exponential growth in uh, Web3 adoption. I believe uh, you guys have heard this many times over the past uh, two days, right? Um, people have been talking about uh, how much um, Filecoin is uh, leading the, the growth for Web3. And you can see these amazing metrics just like a little bit uh, less than two years uh, since the mainnet launch, right? Uh, almost 17 exabytes of storage capacity, hundreds of uh, petabytes of da uh, useful data that are stored on the network, uh, over 4,000 storage providers, and over 1.9 million uh, network users. Um, and I want to also uh, give people like a, a, a quick overview of uh, Filecoin's economy. Uh, this is a diagram of uh, Filecoin's economy. Um, and I will try to, uh, so remember the three, three observations, right? So utility is emerging, people start to consume useful services and reputation starts to emerge. I'll try to map that to the Filecoin's economy as well. So, uh, so this is a diagram for Filecoin's economy. Uh, and you can see that uh, this part, which is the, the, the exchange of the Filecoin's island economy with like real world clients, right? Real world clients, they just want to adopt uh, decentralized or like storage services or cloud services in general, right? Uh, so that's the competition. That is the grand marketplace uh, that's emerging and Filecoin is competing with centralized um, uh, CDN, centralized uh, storage services uh, in that market. So that is where the utility uh, and utility consumption and token demand is coming from. And then within the, the Filecoin economy, right, you can see uh, utility provision and also like token circulation. And that is um, uh, facilitating according to Filecoin's economic design. And you, you also see um, um, reputation and service quality of uh, individual storage providers uh, to emerge and also the reputation of the entire network, right, of the, the grand marketplace that Filecoin is competing with like other uh, centralized and decentralized cloud service uh, solutions, right? So that is also emerging as well. So um, I think we can uh, make this conclusion that um, with the growth and success of Filecoin, uh, we are actually witnessing the transition of Web3 from just the pure token economies uh, to a service economy that is powered by uh, token economics. And I think that is a fundamental difference and that really gives Web3 a chance to be, become massively adopted. Okay, the next question. So if we talk about Filecoin, Filecoin is the service economy powered by token economics. What additional data does Filecoin provide? Uh, first of all, let's see how much uh, network data does uh, Filecoin generate every day. Uh, I'm just uh, giving you a some hints um, for Bitcoin. Bitcoin generates about uh, 24 megabytes of uh, blockchain data every day. And anyone wants to guess how much uh, data does Ethereum generate? Ballpark number? Anyone? Uh, close, but a bit more than that. It's um, 500 megabytes. Uh, and that is uh, because um, Ethereum has been like really like uh, uh, more, uh, getting more adoptions uh, over the past few years. Okay, with that being said, how much uh, on-chain data or blockchain data does uh, Filecoin generate every day? Guess? I, I say a lot more, right? <laughs> I say a lot more previously, so how, 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 how much more? What? Double, Double like so um, uh, uh, 1,000 megabyte or one gigabyte? Any other guesses? 100 gigabyte. What? 100 gigabyte. No, that, uh, I think that's too much. <laughs> yes, you're right. Uh, it's uh, actually um, um, 100,000 megabytes or 100 gigabytes. So actually, uh, in scale, it's like way more than um, Bitcoin and Ethereum. And that's because a Filecoin is a more, uh, it's a, a more like utility-driven uh, service economy that's powered by tokenomics. So there are way more um, metrics to be covered uh, in addition to just like token data. Uh, and also like, so let me make, maybe just explain a little bit why uh, Falcon is generating so much data. Uh, it has more data dimension. So uh, just to show you a, a quick comparison, uh, Bitcoin is really simple, right? If you, if you read the uh, Bitcoin source code, you know that mostly you just record token data, token uh, minting, token transactions, et cetera, et cetera. Right? Uh, for Ethereum, uh, because it has the capabilities of um, 
like computing uh, codes, right? Executing codes and um, um, uh, execute smart contracts. So it, it also has like use case data. Uh, for Filecoin, Filecoin has the token data, the use case data, and also service level data. So that is something that is quite novel uh, to just like um, uh, to other like token uh, economies as well. Uh, let me give you an example of these d data dimensions. So first we have the token data, right? That is um, similar to pretty much all blockchains, right? You have your circling supply, you have your uh, token minting, token burning, uh, locking, staking, vesting, transactions, uh, et cetera. And use case data on Filecoin. So for Filecoin, um, the, 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 the word actors uh, are the equivalent of like smart contracts in the uh, Ethereum virtual machine. Uh, and under each actor, there are like lots of methods to be called, right? It's similar to uh, the smart contracts that you have uh, lots of uh, uh, methods to be called as well. And all of these are how people are using the Filecoin blockchain. And so far, all of the, the Filecoin actors are built in. Um, but with the uh, upcoming fully programmable FVM, uh, there will be more use cases um, on the Filecoin network and therefore generate uh, a, ton uh, a ton more of uh, uh, use case level data. And this uh, service level data, uh, I think this is really uh, unique to Filecoin and some other uh, emergent utility driven service economies. Uh, it really showcases how service providers uh, on this network are providing, committing, and also fulfilling their services on the network. And you can see that, uh, like, so Filecoin uh, generates, um, sorry, I should be pointing <laughs> at this screen. Uh, so you can see that Filecoin generates like network data that showcase uh, the, the, the amount of, uh, and status of uh, uh, active storage, uh, faults, terminations, recoveries, uh, expected expirations, uh, extension rate, et cetera, et cetera. And then uh, all, all this, um, you can also like compose a different uh, component of this uh, data uh, into like other intelligence that tells you more about how uh, Filecoin is doing as a, a, a service network as well. Uh, and with some analysis, you, you can see that it actually varies uh, among different storage providers, um, so which get, makes it a good foundation for a, a, a metric to measure uh, service quality and also reputation. The entire service level data also constitute the overall reputation and service quality of the Filecoin network, and it can be comparable uh, to other storage services as well. So uh, I think this is amazing, uh, and from a researcher's point of view, I think it means that there are lots of hidden gems of, for network analytics and lots of potential for uh, data-driven product opportunities. So which brings me to my last part. What are some unique network analytic uh, opportunities on Filecoin? And maybe we can recap uh, who are the main participants of the Filecoin network. So you have uh, community and the, uh, just regular participants. You have service providers. From the case of Filecoin, it's uh, storage providers. Uh, you have investor in financial services or the, the grant token holder community. Uh, you also have uh, clients and use cases uh, who represent like developers um, and, and the uh, smart contracts in the future. They face some common problems, right? It's like they, they don't know what, what's going on uh, in, the, in the network because of its, uh, the, the amount of data that's generated every day. It's quite complex. Uh, service providers, how, do I, how should I cal calculate my ROI? Um, how do I attract, how do I stand out uh, from my competitors? Uh, for investors, right? So, how do I um, like calculate my risk? How do I uh, distill insights for uh, some decision making? Uh, for client and use cases, how do I differentiate different service provider? Right, the four thousand service providers. How do I differentiate their services? And how do I commit? And how do I make new uh, business opportunity or um, uh, applications based on the intelligence? Um, a few very straightforward, um, and also like, th so I'm gonna present you some examples of the existing and also rapidly growing network analytics solutions. And the first, uh, the most straightforward, and, uh, it, and it's just a data and intelligence dashboard. So data and intelligence dashboard uh, shows the real time health and key metrics of the network. Uh, it can also be broken down into like some sub dashboards uh, if people want to address um, a specific topic, right? You can also like compose different uh, network data to uh, produce your own intelligence that tells uh, different stories. S storage provider analytics uh, is basically uh, covering like uh, reputation and service quality metrics, right? So uh, also can serve a, a gu guideline uh, uh, for the entire 
uh, network of uh, storage providers to improve their service quality and behaviors, right? Um, it also helps um, clients to choose, oh, who are the better uh, storage providers and uh, how do I uh, engage more transactions and deals with them. Token intelligence, um, this is probably the most widely used network analytics solutions and it's very common in networks like uh, Bitcoin, Ethereum, and other uh, blockchains, right? Uh, it can also be specific to Filecoin as well. It serves as the fundamental analysis of Filecoin's value and also Filecoin's usages. Um, some of, like, because like the, the overall um, metrics and uh, data for Filecoin is, it could be different from Bitcoin and Ethereum, right? So um, there's lots of um, uh, analytics and uh, research opportunity to be done there. Simulations and projections. Um, I think it really helps people to understand how the web network will evolve under various per parameters and assumptions. Uh, it's really good for community governance uh, and also like, for example, FIP discussions. I, I know that there will be a panel discussion later. Uh, maybe um, people, like when people are, are trying to uh, make a stance on it, uh, simulations and projections can, can help them make some decisions. Adoption and anal uh, analytics, uh, so th this is basically measuring like the, the, the market uh, for, for Filecoin, how, ma how, how many people are using it. Um, and as I mentioned, like Filecoin is really leading the way for a massive adoption uh, of decentralized cloud services. How do we prove that, right? This is uh, some uh, opportunities that, that, that we can take. And there are more, right? So the upcoming FVN, there will be FVN analytics. Retrieval market is coming up very soon. Uh, you have uh, you could have like a service recommendation if uh, Falcon is going to become the e-commerce uh, for uh, decentralized cloud services. You also can also have like user profile analytics, uh, storage provider credit score, uh, a lot more than that. So that's why uh, we also wrote out the the project uh, Space Scope. Um, so it's basically uh, like a composable uh, network intelligence API uh, that you can use uh, to easily access network data and produce um, your own. Uh, network intelligence or produce your, use, use that as a data source to power your uh, applications as well. So uh, if you guys are interested, uh, reach out to me. Uh, I can uh, get you onboarded with Spacecope. And we also want a Spacecope to become a community thing as well. So, so help, help us design an economy around Spacecope as well, or like around the uh, data analytics in general as well.